Welcome to this free live video. This is about the group two cations qualitative analysis. And so if you remember from our previous analysis, our previous or group one analysis, that analysis focused primarily on silver, lead, and mercury one. This analysis, on the other hand, is actually going to focus on a series of elements uh, that are slightly different. <clears throat> Now, the important thing to note about these elements that we're going to be looking at is there is some familiar territory here. There is mercury, but it's mercury two, not mercury one. There is lead. That lead is there um, just in case there were any remnants of the lead that did not get picked up in the group one analysis. And then we also have bismuth and copper. Now these other ones here, the antimony, the tin, and there are actually in this group, this technique can also be used to find cadmium and arsenic. These substances, while they are going to be, while it's possible to extract them using this technique, we will not be focusing on this particular part. So, um, these substances we will not actually be addressing at all. We will be looking only at the four ions, mercury two, lead two, bismuth, and copper two. And so the heart of this particular chemical reaction is the reaction of, so again, if we start with the top, all ions were here, we were able to break down the ions in using hydrochloric acid into the group ones. And now we're gonna break this down using H2S. And what we're gonna get here are the mercury, the lead, the copper, and the bismuth off of this and everything else will be left behind. Now, the form of H2S we are going to use, we're not going to actually bubble in um, hydrogen sulfide. It's a little bit too difficult for us to work with. It's not very reliable. What we're going to use in its stead is something called thioacetamide. And the purpose of the thioacetamide is it's a solution that under heat will decompose, give us the H2S, and the H2S in the acidic environment will allow us to precipitate all of these and make mercury 2 sulfide, lead 2 sulfide, copper 2 sulfide and bismuth three sulfide. And so these substances, which are mostly black in color, um, the exception to that being the bismuth is more of a brownish, uh, but those black solids will come off as a result of this. And then we'll be able to characterize those black solids um, through a series of other tests. Now, what does that actually look like in terms of the, the procedure? So let's say that we have now our sulfides. The remaining procedural steps here um, are going to be ones that allow us to kind of go through and do that. And so if you look at the procedure, you'll see step one here is all about doing a couple of things. Oxidizing so that all of the multiple forms of, of these ions can come into the ones that we can actually precipitate. So that's what the hydrogen peroxide is for. That's what the HCl is for, to get it into an acidic environment. We're gonna concentrate everything, continue to hit it with acid, continue to concentrate it, and then there's our thioacetamide right there. And so the thioacetamide plus heat is going to give us 
the H2S, which is gonna precipitate all of our solids. And then we're gonna go through some processes to purify the solids, make sure that they are the right stuff. And then we go through a series of separations. So we start with nitric acid. Nitric acid will be able to separate the lead, the copper, and the bismuth from the mercury. The mercury itself is not soluble in nitric acid. Uh, the nitric acid is not capable of oxidizing it to a form that is usable. Um, so the next step is after we've kind of extracted these, we're gonna save this decantate for future analysis. We're gonna take this solid and expose it to aqua regia, which is a combination of nitric acid and hydrochloric acid. This stuff will dissolve anything and that will give us the mercury ion that we can then use using a tin test. We can then characterize it and determine if we have it. And the tin test here should look familiar to you because it's basically the same tin test we used for the mercury one in the group one analysis. We're looking for a black or gray kind of solid. Um, to be present there. And so if we kind of follow along, that's step three. Step three is the use of the nitric acid. Then step four is once we've cleaved off that mercury, now we're gonna do a confirmation test of the mercury. Step five should look really familiar to us as well. Because step five, we're going to add sulfuric acid. The sulfuric acid is going to cause the lead to come off as lead sulfate. And then we're going to do some series of characterizations to give us lead two. And finally, lead two chromate, which again, should sound familiar to you because that's more or less the exact string of analyses we did in the group one analysis once we were able to characterize lead. So from there, we've got copper left over and bismuth left over. We're going to expose these to ammonia. And what will happen is the bismuth will form a solid. The copper will stay complexed. We've seen this copper complex before. And so there are some characterizations there. So um, we've seen the copper ammonia complex before, it's blue. The more ammonia we add, the darker blue it gets. So this statement here about the decantate after step seven, that's a real thing. Um, um, if it's not blue, chances are there's no copper there. Um, so step seven is where we do that separation. And then step eight, we do some confirmation uh, to get bismuth, which is black, or um, in step nine, we're gonna use uh, potassium ferrocyanate to make the a red precipitate for copper too. So some things that are different about this analysis, the creation of the solids in the first part is very, very finicky. It's very fickle. There's a lot of, let's make sure that we got everything's going on here as opposed to the group one analysis, which was pretty easy to tell when it was done because it just, it just made solid. And then at some point it quit making solid. Step one's a lot more involved. There's a lot more goes into the process because it's a slower reaction and there are more things to precipitate out. Um, but once we get there, 
once we get through step three, it actually goes pretty quick. And so what we've set up for you, this is a two day lab. We're expecting that somewhere about a day will be spent on the known analysis and then about a day to do the unknown analysis. And we're gonna try to keep those two days kind of separate from each other just because um, we don't want to have to store some of the sulfides in our drawers in between lab days. We can if we have to, but we want, we want to try to keep them separated if possible. So as far as the, the pre-lab is concerned, in the pre-lab, pre-lab questions are relatively straightforward. Once again, you've got a purpose statement. The, you're going to ask, be asked for the list of the ions in the group. We've already discussed those. The reagent that we are using to separate this group of ions from the other groups, that is where we are talking about um, either one of two things. We can talk about H2S or we can talk about thioacetamide. And an example equation, well, that you can pull directly from the equations list there. Which of the precipitates of this group can't be dissolved in nitric acid? Well, look again to the procedure there for that. That is exactly where we answered that question. Same thing for question number five. So the pre-lab here is not too terribly involved, but there's one part of it here that is involved. If you remember, in our work in the group one analysis, we gave you the template for the notebook. We told you exactly what we were looking for in that notebook. So what we are asking you to do is basically we want you to replicate this. So make a four column notebook, use a table. You can set this up in Word or you can do it inside of the, the Lab Archives notebook itself. Um, you can copy and paste or, or, or whatever. But what you want to do here is you want to have this already set up and ready to go. So the tables are made. The procedures have already been inputted for both the known and the unknown analysis. And that way, all that you have to do when you get to lab on Tuesday is drop in the actual observations, make your analyses, drop in the equations. So you've got a little bit of extra legwork to do and it's better to do it in advance. So make sure that you get this notebook in there, make sure that it's ready to go before you get to lab so that you're not spending lab time putting all of this together when you should just be marking down your observations. So that's it for this particular pre-lab video. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Otherwise, I will see you next time in lab.